The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. We're back exposing America's prescription stimulant addiction. We're joined by actress Jennifer Jimenez as well as psychiatrist Dr. Dominic Sportelli. And we've been talking about the rampant abuse in Hollywood, but you alluded to it's not just Hollywood, and it's not. It's I it's mean, all you over the place. That's an excellent point, actually. That it's it's not just Hollywood. And I know Leslie, when you first had this topic mm -hmm. and this idea to do this investigation, mm -hmm. number one, it was a very personal topic for you, and number two, you found similarly alarming ease of access to these meds. Correct? Exactly. And I have a love hate relationship with Adderall. When I was a teenager, I was diagnosed with ADHD. I was put on Adderall, and it really helped me for a lot of years. It helped me focus and you know get my life on track and everything. But then when I when I grew grew up, I didn't really feel like it was helping me anymore. I felt like it actually was doing the opposite and that I couldn't think clearly and that I would ruminate on like one sentence trying to write a script or something like that. And I made the conscious decision that I had to get off of it. But the truth is it is so easy to get. In fact, I was on Instagram the other day and an ad popped up where you take a questionnaire of six questions. It's like you could possibly be ADHD and here we'll set up a doctor's appointment for you in your city so you can get a prescription for Adderall message boards, same thing. People talking about how to act when you go into the doctor's office to get Adderall. It's so pervasive. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Dr. Sportelli, I know this is a big problem in the field because there's such a lack of specialists who truly can diagnose ADHD. That's the issue is we have a lack of behavioral health care specialists. So unfortunately, or fortunately, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, but a lot of primary care doctors and nurse practitioners <clears throat> need to address the behavioral health problem. And the training there to truly screen these patients might not be there. When you think you have ADHD and you go see your doctor, the first thing that needs to happen is a full medical workup because there are so many medical things that could potentially cause symptoms of ADHD. Neurologic problems, seizures, traumatic brain mm -hmm. injuries, hormone mm -hmm. issues, right, mm -hmm. thyroid issues. Once that's ruled out, then we get into psychiatry and psychology. Is there a mood issue? Is there anxiety? Is there a life stressor? All of this needs to be worked out. Then when we finally start getting towards ADHD, is, is this something that's really been going on your entire life? Because if this is something that you first start seeing in adulthood, we have to trace it back to childhood. This isn't something that just happens. Once we think it's ADHD, we're not gonna jump to a stimulant. Let's try lifestyle stuff. Let's try therapy. Let's try structure. Let's try scheduling. If that doesn't work, a non-stimulant. Then you do a non-stimulant for a little while. And if that doesn't work, we get to a low-dose stimulant and we monitor closely. But Dr. Sportelli, do you feel like the majority, <laughs> even patients that come to see you, want the quick fix? They want the Adderall. 1,000% yes, and that's our responsibility as doctors and prescribers to say, slow down, hold on a second. And I think we need to have that attitude as prescribers. I want people, when they come into my office and say, hey doc, I think I have ADHD, I want them to say, well, let's talk about why it's probably not ADHD. Is it safe to say if you truly have ADHD and are appropriately prescribed a stimulant, it's going to be at a lower dose to really see that beneficial effect yeah. versus what people are getting when they do these online questionnaires or from their hairdresser or elsewhere. Aren't they getting much higher doses and building up a tolerance? Much higher doses. And here's the data, guys. Specifically, we're talking about like Adderall, the dextroamphetamines, most research shows that anything over 40 milligrams a day is probably not doing much for your ADHD. Mm -hmm. It's probably just boosting the euphoria. So if you get people that are really chasing those high doses, it's a red flag. When someone truly has ADHD and they're operating here, the stimulants can bring them to a baseline. If you truly don't have ADHD, you're not gonna improve that much. As a matter of fact, there was a study done that showed that college students that did not have ADHD, that took stimulants to help them study, they were awake and alert, but it act actually affected their memory, recall, and creativity in a negative way over time. So the truth is, if you truly don't have ADHD, you do not wanna take these medicines. Now, people abuse them because it's a stimulant, and you know what, it does make you feel good. It brings you up. But if you don't have ADHD, I don't want kids thinking that this is a quick fix to get you a better grade. And you, it's probably and you, not going to work. And you're alluding to college for studying. Yeah. I mean, I think that is one of the biggest places where yeah. people start. They go, well, I should have been on this all my life. Right. And boom, it starts a vicious cycle. They never come off them. But right. I think that's a really important message that yeah. while you may feel better and stay awake, you're not retaining any of that information. It's so a false sense that, that you're functioning at a higher level. Yeah.